The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show at the Pride Pavilion here, catching up with Olivia Norenberg. Olivia, how's it going? Good. How are you, Bern? I'm, I'm great. Uh, beautiful sunny morning here. Um, big crowds here today at the Farm Show. Obviously talking corn. Um, obviously talking harvest. Um, that is a big conversation this time of year, every year at the Outdoor Farm Show. Um, before we get there, let's talk about this corn crop in 2024. You know, it's been a difficult one and a strange one. What have you seen? Yeah, it's definitely been a year of uh, one word I would use to describe it as variability. We did have a lot of different planting dates this year. Uh, you know, we had some growers that were out there in April planting corn. Uh, this year, I think that actually worked pretty well for some of those uh, some of those growers. Others, you know, first half of May, uh, last half of May, some in June, some planting beans even into July. Um, the corn crop. Uh, across Ontario and across my zone uh, is definitely at various different stages of growth just based off of those different planting dates. So that's definitely been a challenge uh, and it'll be interesting getting to harvest yeah. here. <laughs> and uh, I guess the big job now you would say is to get out and scout because yeah. so much variability, I think growers really need to find out what they've got in their field. Yes. Yeah, I think one of the main things as we go into this harvest season is getting into your corn crop, actually going through the fields, husking back some ears there, see what we're dealing with going into harvest. Uh, there's lots of things that we're dealing with this season. You know, tar spot's been a big one. Almost every field I feel like in Ontario, you can go in and you're seeing tar, at least some form of tar spot. Uh, so that's one thing uh, that we're looking for when we're peeling back some ears. Uh, I've been seeing quite a bit of western bean cutworm feeding. Uh, and so anytime we see any insect feeding, those are also, you know, uh, basically vectors or just for disease that can come in. So like dawn ear molds, whatnot. Uh, so looking at things like that as we go into harvest uh, so that we can prioritize certain fields on our farm. Uh, where there might be certain issues yeah. that could be coming uh, for like late season standability uh, and plant health. Yeah. Let's dig into some of those. Um, tar spot, um, as you mentioned, you know, really is you know going gangbusters, unfortunately, um, yeah. this time of year. Um, what do we need to do there? Um, we need to probably get in there and get that um, you know that that grain out of uh, out of the field early, especially when it comes to something like silage. Yes. So you know, around this time right now, we do have quite a few growers that are actually doing some silage, um, and so tar spot is a challenge. Also, when it comes to you know the the silage side of things, we know we talk about grain a lot, but it's also important to consider it for silage. Um, I think the main concern there is just how quickly the plant can dry down with tar spot. You know, from initial infection, it can really progress within a couple of weeks, um, and so we're really really important to kind of see what stage of moisture the plant's drying down at um, because that can affect how how the silage and siles um, which can affect you know uh, all the different feed values and whatnot too mm -hmm. so I would say how quickly the plants drying down because of tar spot is the main thing that we're concerned about when it comes to silage so um, important to kind of look and see what kind of pressures you're having in your field for tar spot uh, with regards to silage there uh, on the grain side of things obviously we want to see um, how are plants doing? Are there a lot of leaves dying down? Is the plant drawing from the stalk now because those leaves are dead? Um, that can lead to some standability issues with tar spot, obviously. So in fields where uh, we have maybe some high pressures there for grain, we're going to want to prioritize those for, for grain harvest as well because we can have some uh, stalk integrity issues, yeah. which is not fun. We don't want to harvest corn that's yeah. on the ground. So. We don't want to be picking them off the ground. Hey, let's talk insects. Um, you mentioned uh, western bean cutworm. What type of impact have we seen this year and what does that mean on harvest? Yeah, so I, I think we did see quite a few egg masses. You know, I cover into the Norfolk area, definitely more of an issue on those sandier soils. Um, but I am seeing them kind of burrowing in the corn, uh, kind of the tips if you're peeling them back now. Um, as I said, those can be vectors for disease. That's where those ear molds can come in when we do have the insects kind of uh, burrowing in the, the tips there. Um, so I would say that's an issue. Uh, another pest that I guess I would like to mention is just corn rootworm. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, I feel like it was more of an issue last year, but I still have been in fields this year where we do see some of that goosenecking um, and some uh, impact on standability there. Um, I think the main thing is looking for that in your fields, looking for that goosenecking um, so that we can make a plan for next year. Right. I think a lot of these things when we're in the field, it's let's see what's going on this year. How can we mitigate it for next year? So uh, 
if we're seeing corn rootworm, maybe that's when we need to, to really think about our rotation for next year uh, and also think about uh, hybrid selection, whether we need to maybe uh, consider planting a Smart Stacks Pro hybrid or something like that. Uh, and same with tar spot or other diseases in your field. Let's look at what we have in our field right now because tar spot isn't going to go away. It's in the soil now that we've had it. Um, so let's look at those hybrid ratings. Most of our seed guides now uh, industry-wide have tar spot ratings and, and different other ratings, you know, uh, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf flight. So look at your hybrid selection for next year, knowing what diseases you have in your field right. as well. So. I think it's getting in your field, seeing what you're dealing with, and how can we make a plan for next year. So documenting everything you're seeing, make a plan for next year, and then prioritizing harvest based off of what we're seeing in the field. Well, Olivia, hey, some great insights. Uh, as I say, a very interesting year uh, in, in the corn business. Um, we'll see how harvest goes. Uh, thanks for making some time for Real Agriculture and the Corn School here at the Outdoor Farm. No problem. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on the show.